2020 brought us uh, a couple of, in the physics world, uh, theories of everything. Uh, Eric Weinstein kind of, I mean, he's been working for probably decades, but he put out uh, this idea of geometric unity or started sort of publicly thinking and talking about it more. Stephen Wolfram put out um, his physics project, which is kind of this hypergraph view of a theory of everything. Do you uh, find uh, interesting, beautiful things to these theories of everything? What do you think about the physics world and sort of uh, the beautiful, interesting, insightful mathematics in in that world? Whether we're talking about quantum mechanics, which you touched on in a bunch of your videos a little bit, quaternions, like just the mathematics involved, or general relativity, which is more about surfaces and mm -hmm. topology, all that stuff. Well, I think um, as far as like, popularized science is concerned, people are more interested in theories of everything than they should be. Like, because mm -hmm. the problem is, whether we're talking about trying to make sense of Weinstein's lectures or Wolfram's project, or let's just say like listening to uh, Witten talk about string theory, whatever proposed path to a theory of everything, um, you're not actually going to understand it. Some physicists will, but like, you're just not actually going to understand the substance of what they're saying. What I think is way, way more productive is um, to let yourself get really interested in the phenomena that are still deep, but which you have a chance of understanding. Because the path to getting to like even understanding what questions these theories of everything are trying to answer involves like walking down that. Um, I mean, I was watching a video before I came here about from Steve Mould talking about um, why sugar polarizes light in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So fascinating, like really, really interesting. It's not like this novel theory of everything type thing, but to understand what's going on there really requires digging in in depth to certain ideas. And if you let yourself think past what the video tells you about what does circularly polarized light mean and things like that, it actually would get you to a pretty good appreciation of like two state states and quantum systems um, in a way that just trying to read about like oh, what's the, um, what are the hard parts about resolving quantum field theories with general relativity is never going to get you. So as far as popularizing science is concerned, like the audience should be less interested than they are in theories of everything. Um, the popularizers should be less <laughs> uh, emphatic than they are about that. For like actual practicing physicists, uh, you know, it might be the case, maybe more people should think about fundamental questions, but it's difficult to create uh, like a three blue, one brown video on the <laughs> theory of everything. So basically it, we should really try to find the beauty in mathematics or physics by looking at concepts that are like within reach. Yeah, I, I think that's super important. I mean, so you see this in math too with um, the big unsolved problems. So like the clay millennium problems, Riemann hypothesis. Um, have you ever done a video on Fermat's last theorem? No, I have not yet, no. But if I that, did, do you know what I would do? I would talk about um, proving Fermat's last theorem in the specific case of n equals three. Okay? Um, Is that still accessible though? Yes, actually, it's barely. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mathologer might be able to do like a great job on this. He does a good job of taking stuff that's barely accessible and making it. But the, the core ideas of proving it for n equals three are hard, but they do get you real ideas about algebraic number theory. Um, it involves looking at a number field that's, uh, it lives in the complex plane. It looks like a hexagonal lattice. And you start asking questions about factoring numbers in this hexagonal lattice. So it takes a while, but I've talked about this sort of like lattice arithmetic um, in other contexts. And you can get to a okay understanding of that. And the things that make Fermat's last theorem hard are actually quite deep. Um, and so the cases that we can solve it for, it's like you can get these broad sweeps based on some hard, but like accessible um, bits of number theory. But before you can even understand why the general case is as hard as it is, you have to walk through those. And so any other attempt to describe it would just end up being like shallow and not really productive for the viewer's time. Um, I think the same goes for uh, mo most like unsolved problem type things where I think, you know, as a kid, I was actually very inspired by the twin prime conjecture um, that like totally sucked me in. It's this thing that was understandable. I kind of had this dream like, oh, maybe I'll be the one to prove the twin prime conjecture. And new math that I would learn would be like viewed through this lens of like, oh, maybe I can apply it to that in some way. But uh, you sort of mature to a point where you realize that, uh, you should spend your brain cycles on problems that you will see resolved because then you're going to grow to see what it feels like for these things to be resolved rather than spending your brain cycles on something where it's not, it's not going to pan out. Um, 
and the people who do make progress towards these things, like James Maynard, uh, is a great example here of like young creative mathematician who is like pushes in the direction of things like the twin prime conjecture, rather than hitting that head on, just see all the interesting questions that are hard for similar reasons, but become more tractable and let themselves really engage with those. Um, so I think people should get in that habit. I think the popularization of physics should encourage that habit through things like the physics of simple everyday phenomena, because it can get quite deep. And um, yeah, I, I think, I, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of the interest that, you know, people send me messages asking to explain Weinstein's thing or asking <laughs> to explain Wolfram's thing. One, I don't understand them, but more importantly, um, <laughs> you, it's you, too you big a bite to... You, you shouldn't be interested in yeah. those, right? I, it's a giant sort of uh, ball of interesting ideas. There's probably a million of interesting ideas in there that individually could be explored effectively. And to be clear, you should be interested in fundamental questions. I think that's a good habit to ask like what the fundamentals of things are. But I think it takes a lot of steps to, like certainly you shouldn't be trying to answer that unless you actually understand quantum field theory and you actually understand general relativity. That's the cool thing about like your videos, people who haven't done mathematics. Like if you really give it time, watch it a couple of times and like try to try to reason about it, you can actually understand the concept that's being explained. And it's not a coincidence that the things I'm describing aren't like the most um, up-to-date uh, progress on the Riemann hypothesis cousins or um, like there's context in which the analog of the Riemann hypothesis has been solved in like more uh, discrete feeling finite settings that are w more well-behaved. I'm not describing that because it just takes a ton to get there. And instead, I think it'll be like productive to have an actual understanding of something that can you, you can pack into 20 minutes. I think that's beautifully put. Ultimately, that's where like the most satisfying thing is when you really understand. Um, yeah, really understand. Build a habit of feeling what it's like to actually come to resolution. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to, which it can also be enjoyable, but just being in awe of the fact that you don't understand anything. Yeah, that's not like, I don't know, maybe people get entertainment out of that, but it's not as fulfilling as understanding. You won't grow. Yeah, and but also just the fulfilling. It really does feel good when you first don't understand something and, and then you do. That's a beautiful feeling.